When managing a patient on mechanical ventilation, it's important to carefully interpret their ABG results to guide your clinical decisions. These values provide insight into the patient's respiratory status, revealing whether ventilation or oxygenation needs adjustment. This video breaks down a practice question that will challenge your ability to analyze ABG results and make precise adjustments to the patient's ventilator settings. So if you're ready, let's get into the question. An 80 kilogram male patient is currently receiving volume controlled ventilation with the following ventilator settings and ABG results. His ventilator settings include an FiO2 of 40%, a rate of 12 breaths per minute, and a tidal volume of 500 milliliters. His ABG results are as follows. pH of 7.38, PaCO2 of 38, bicarb of 24, and a PaO2 of 108. Some additional clinical data includes spontaneous breathing rate of 23 breaths per minute, minute ventilation of 11.5 liters per minute, vital capacity of 500 milliliters, and a maximum inspiratory pressure of negative 15 centimeters of water pressure. Based on this information, which of the following would be the most appropriate recommendation at this time? A. Place the patient on a 40% T-piece and monitor closely. B. Switch the patient to SIMV at a rate of 5 per minute. C. Place the patient on CPAP and monitor closely. Or D. Maintain the current ventilator settings. Do you know the answer? Well, let's break it down. This question requires a comprehensive evaluation of the patient's ABG results and bedside respiratory mechanics to determine whether they are ready for weaning or if mechanical ventilation should be continued. Step one for this question is to analyze the ABG results. A pH of 7.38, PaCO2 of 38, and a bicarb of 24, all of these values are within the normal ranges indicating effective ventilation. A PaO2 of 108 on an FiO2 of 40% is a good oxygenation level, which suggests that the oxygen delivery is adequate. Therefore, this ABG shows stable gas exchange with the current ventilator settings. Now, step two is to evaluate the bedside respiratory parameters. A spontaneous rate of 23 breaths per minute is elevated and may suggest increased work of breathing or anxiety. A minute ventilation of 11.5 liters per minute is higher than expected, consistent with rapid, shallow breathing. A vital capacity of 500 milliliters is normal, but on the lower end of the normal range for an 80 kilogram patient. And a maximum inspiratory pressure of negative 15 indicates weak inspiratory muscle strength. Because remember, the weaning threshold is typically less than or equal to negative 20 to negative 30 centimeters of water pressure. These bedside measurements indicate that the patient is not ready for weaning, as there is evidence of respiratory muscle weakness and a shallow breathing pattern. Now for step three, we need to evaluate the answer choices. Option A, a T-piece trial is too aggressive. Removing full ventilatory support in a patient with a low vital capacity and weak maximum inspiratory pressure could result in respiratory failure. Option B, SIMV at 5 breaths per minute, would be considered a premature reduction of support. Lowering the rate significantly increases the patient's work of breathing, which may not be tolerated. Option C, CPAP is also inadequate support. CPAP provides oxygenation support but does not assist ventilation, making it inappropriate for someone with impaired respiratory muscle strength. And option D, maintain the current ventilator settings, is the best choice. The patient is well ventilated and oxygenated, but not yet ready for weaning due to poor respiratory mechanics. So the key takeaway for this question is this. Even though the ABG values appear normal, Weaning decisions must also be guided by bedside measurements of respiratory effort and muscle strength. In this case, the patient is not ready for spontaneous breathing, and maintaining current ventilator support is the safest course of action. 
So by breaking down the question step by step, we could easily determine that the correct answer has to be D. Maintain the current ventilator settings. If you want more practice questions like this to help you prepare for and pass the board exam on your first attempt, check out our other helpful resources. I will include links to them right below this video in the description. And if you got value from this video, please give it a like and subscribe to support the channel. And just a quick reminder, we are not doctors. This video is for informational purposes only. Have a nice day and thanks again for watching.